Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to show you some things hopefully you've never seen before that involve us taking new technology to help measure and communicate emotion out of the lab and into the real world. This started last night. I don't know how many of you here now were there, a couple hundred people at Ignite last night when Brady was wearing one of these Q sensors, the newer version of the old GAB activator he was wearing, uh, and a, a wrist sensor, a palm sensor also. And we were watching it go up when he was excited. That could be for positive things, like a favorite speaker coming on stage. Uh, but also, I think he thought his largest peak at the time was when a uh, speaker showed up at the last minute and wanted to change all of her slides. So that was a stressful thing. Actually, he doesn't realize this yet. I'll show him the data later. But the, um, his biggest peak was when the Lady Gaga, what we can learn about business from Lady Gaga uh, pictures, were all up. So you could see these here. People like Brady and you and me, most of us, we can talk about our feelings. We may or may not have very accurate awareness of them, but we have speech. We developed these sensors originally to go out of the lab to help a lot of people who can't articulate what's going on with their feelings. Many people on the autism spectrum, many people who, for various reasons, don't have language. And I'll play a, sh a short clip here of a girl on the spectrum who is outwardly showing some agitation right here. You'll see her skin conductance level peaking right here. This uh, graph at the bottom is an entire occupational therapy session. We can go in with the sensors and uh, help her communicate this data without interfering with what they're ordinarily doing. So there's some real stressful peaking there. Uh, here is, in real time, this uh, blue window is a zoom of this little blue segment right here. So the right edge here is her real data at that moment. It's interesting to point out over here, she gets on a swing, and the exertion, the excitement of getting on the swing is another big peak. But as soon as she's on the swing and starts that rocking movement, we see this nice relaxing. I don't know how many of you have noticed uh, you know, people like Bill Gates rocking under stressful situations. You start looking around, you'll notice a lot of people do this. And I think it's really smart that now they're putting a lot of rocking chairs in the airports, too. It's uh, very calming before those stressful flights. Of course, it's not just uh, people with speech impediments who have trouble speaking. I don't know how many of you have babies. How many of you wish that you like, knew what was going on inside that baby? I, I know I, when mine were little, I used to wish for the mute button. Sometimes they don't come with that. Uh, but it would be kind of nice if you could see if they're uh, getting ready to cry. And sometimes with the sensor, and here's a baby wearing it in a pink fuzzy package on the ankle, uh, you can read out this level going up before baby cries. Here we think maybe there was a little gastrointestinal distress after feeding, signal goes up, then the baby starts crying bounced the baby, and the level went back down nicely. Here's one of my favorite examples from a colleague whose daughter, age six, wore the sensor all day at school. This was a very exciting day. It was her first music recital, first live performance, and mom was concerned that she might be very stressed. And indeed, we see this peaking here for her first live harp recital, a bit more peaking when she sang in front of the whole school relaxing nicely when she's listening to the other performers, going up walking to class, going up with physical activity, as one would expect, physical exertion, things that make you sweat, make the skin conductance go up as well. Uh, and the sensor's measuring skin conductance, physical activity, three-axis accelerometer, and temperature. So it can decouple the physical activity from the emotional stress. Uh, the surprise was this big peak between class and PE, which in the daughter's ordinary day, would, you wouldn't expect to occur. And when mom talked to daughter about that, she found out that the daughter was being dragged into a bullying situation at age six. Uh, in fact, later on in the day, just recalling the situation, the emotional stress was arousing again at that moment. Uh, we are also working a lot with educators who are interested in helping tune a child's arousal to the appropriate level. You know, if you're too aroused, you can't concentrate. If you're under-aroused, you're falling asleep. Uh, where's that sweet spot? And here, when we see math and inquiry lessons, this unfortunately low level, <laughs> mom would like to see that go up, right? I know as a professor at MIT, seeing the students' data all day, and it's big in lab and big for problem sets and really low for classroom activity, we have a ways to go there. 
things that matter in life that create big emotions, these special moments, are really able to be captured in a way now that one uh, was never able to do before because you were no longer tethered to a bunch of equipment in the lab. I've seen several brides and grooms wear the sensor. Uh, we've done white lacy versions, packages for them, and others. Here the bride was in India and she wore it under her traditional Indian dress. And we see peaks before, chilling with her friends, and then, interestingly, four, the four biggest peaks were the four most important moments of the wedding ceremony. The first was the vows. The second was when she took the new position on the right side of her new husband, symbolically showing him that she was now his wife. The third, the biggest of all for her, the bride wearing this, was when he made the symbolic gesture to wrap this sacred thread around her and say that she was now his, his wife. Uh, and finally was the priest declaring them husband and wife. You can imagine the uses in market research and usability. Here's a one-minute trailer playing with a nine-year-old boy, skin conductance, synchronized with the content that he's watching. Uh, the peaks follow about a second, one to two seconds after the event that elicits them. So you see these big peaks with the music and the chipmunks. Again, this is a nine-year-old boy. Oh, relax. Who's going to be singing chipmunks? And now come his three biggest peaks. I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. I want to know what love is. It's interesting. That was it for him. Uh, that lovey-dovey back-and-forth stuff, decaying, age nine. Um, he did peek at the name of the movie and the date, uh, which is important when you're a creator of content. I don't know how many of you have made a video, you know, put it up on YouTube, and you kind of wonder, like, did people laugh at your joke? Uh, did they smirk at it? You know, how were they responding to that? Now, what I've shown you here is the arousal. This is one dimension of the emotional experience that's now out of the lab and able to be measured easily. It, it really captures if you're engaged, if you're connecting with something that matters to you, it tends to go up. Uh, but it doesn't tell you if things are positive or negative. Uh, was he smiling and pleased or was he like, I hate that thing, right? And so you don't just want the arousal in many cases, you also want to know if it was good or bad, positive or negative valence. So I will show you uh, what we're doing there. This is work led by Dr. Rana el Kalyubi in our lab and my co-founder of Affectiva. Uh, here, so, yeah, sorry, what you can I'm see, sorry. I'll turn off the sound here, uh, is tracking of facial expressions and interpretation not only of things like eyebrow raise, smile, you know, um, corrugator furrowing, uh, which can go with frowning or concentrating, but also the combination of those movements over time that, uh, like building up not just the phonemes and the word recognition on the face, but building up phrase recognition. And this lets us see if somebody's agreeing, disagreeing, uh, thinking, unsure, you know, is that web page confusing? Uh, are they even concentrating? This goes beyond clicks and, and eye gaze and where you're looking to how are you looking? How are you feeling? How is that engagement going? And so now we can capture this uh, automatically. It will be uh, Dave Berman, CEO of Affectiva, who's here. Dave, I don't know where you are. Raise your hand uh, right there on the end. And I will be uh, both available after the session and at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning uh, if you'd like to come and try this out. We have been taking this out of the lab. We developed this technology originally to go on desktops, laptops, um, into kids' schools uh, for a lot of people who are nonverbal learning disabled, people on the autism spectrum who talk about difficulty reading faces. Now we're putting it out on the cloud. Affectiva is, has built the back end, and I can invite you now, I'm thrilled to say, uh, probably not all of you here right now, you probably don't all have webcams in your lap, and it would probably kill the bandwidth here, but when you're back with your webcam, uh, feel free to go to Forbes.com and try out the following demo, which I will uh, do here very quickly, show you what, what you'll do. You'll be able to go online and click, uh, you could just search for interactive smile, pick one of these Super Bowl videos, ideally one you haven't seen, uh, click it. It will ask your permission to uh, record your data because we're always opt-in at Affectiva. Permission, turn on your camera and microphone. And then it will play the video and it will 
uh, record your smile. Well, actually, it will record your video, and it will then show you back uh, where you smiled, where you smiled a little, where you smiled a medium amount, where you smiled a lot. Grandpa, Mikey, Mikey. Grandpa, I missed you. So it will show you a result. I've seen this many times. I think this one's just okay, but yes, I would watch this again. We can collect the metadata, we can collect behavioral data, and we can begin to associate the facial expressions with it and compare you to other people, group you with people who are like you. And here I smiled when he started uh, cleaning up the house near and dear to my heart, uh, and I smiled at, at the end here. And actually, I, we can also tell if when you're engaged, here I was engaged the whole time, we can see if you looked away maybe right at the moment that they put up the logo or the product placement. So this uh, interactive affect reading technology is now moving out into the real world, and we're able to start to put these together now, put together the facial expressions, put together the arousal, use this for medical purposes, for market research purposes, for educational purposes, to help people who have difficulty communicating emotion, which is really all of us when we're online. Finally, I, I want to say that this is very much an effort that is uh, a joint effort with a lot of people, and it's one where it's also, because we're dealing with such important information, you know, emotion is about what matters, uh, it's important to deal with it respectfully. Uh, so it's always opt-in, and when we are able to collect this emotion, not just one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, but on the web, collectively, the power of the people to uh, communicate their feelings in ways never done before, it's gonna be really huge. So I hope you'll join us in this effort to improve the way that emotions are measured and communicated today. I invite you to learn more here and join us for the nine o'clock session in the morning too, if you'd like. Thank you. <laughs>